forward to the book haul. Weirdos, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Abe and today I'm very excited to show you a giant massive book haul. I literally have two ginormous stacks of books that I am well, technically three, but the third is not as ginormous, and I'm so excited to show you that I got over the past weekend at the time of filming of this video, probably not by the time it uploaded, but if you saw my October Disability Readathon vlog, you should know roughly when I got these books. Anyway, I'm really excited to show these to you guys. There's just so many, so let's jump in. As per usual with most of my videos, I will put the obligatory disclaimer. I cannot pronounce things. I'm dyslexic. I cannot code things. I'm sorry if I mispronounce things. It is not intentional. I just can't. It's difficult. So, don't yell at me. I kind of have this organized into two different piles. The first pile being the books I picked up on the first day. I went in the second pile is I picked up on the second day. So I'll let you know when I switch over. But all the ones at the beginning I picked up on the first day. Wow, I, the book, I just hit myself in the face with the book. Good job. The first book that I picked up is The Jungle by Upton St. Clair. I love this book. It's one of my favorites. And this does have an audiobook. If you don't know what it's about, it's about this immigrant family that comes comes to America trying to find a better life and it takes place at the turn of the century. So I really love this book and I was so happy to pick up an actual copy of it and it's a hardback and I really like hardbacks. A bunch of the books that I got were hardbacks. Oh and this particular one was about three dollars. Oh my god this library book sale had so many great book deals. I was the amount of books I got for the price I got which is this has changed my book buying life. <laughs> The next book I picked up was Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I never really read this. We did not have to read this for school and it was one that I've kind of been thinking about like in the back of my mind. I want to get better about reading more classics so I saw this and I was like hey let's pick this up. I think I will get mad at this book and I do know that the premise of it is that this woman on the cover gets pregnant by a priest. I just have so many feelings about that. And she has to wear this A, the scarlet letter. So I'm kind of excited and this does have an audiobook. The next book I picked up was Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I really like some of Charles Dickens stuff like Oliver Twist. Yeah, I really like the musical and I have lots of really special memories when it comes to the musical of Oliver. Yeah, I don't really know what to expect of this. I think I've seen the movie, but it, it was really distracting when I saw the movie, but I, so I wasn't really paying attention. This does have an audiobook, so I don't really know what to expect. I think it's a love story where like this, this guy and this girl like want to get together, but the guy, like he's of lower class and her father doesn't approve. And that's basically all I know. I think there's a woman who wears a wedding dress in it and then she catches on fire. That's about all I know about Great Expectations. But I have no idea if any of that's true. So we'll see. I'm excited. Did I mention that this has an audiobook? Well, it does. So happy May. The next book that I picked up was The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. I really like Steinbeck's work. I had to read Of Mice and Men my freshman year of high school and I really liked that book. And so I saw this and I've been looking to get more into Steinbeck's work because I liked Of Mice and Men so much. So I'm really happy to have this. I have no idea what The Grapes of Wrath is about. So I'm excited to discover. And this does have an audiobook, so woohoo. The next book I picked up is Gone with the Wind, the epic novel of our time by Margaret Mitchells. And this bad boy is a uh, 1,024 pages. This is joining the 1,000 plus page book club, which includes Don Quixote and War and Peace, and like obviously the Bible, but that doesn't really count in my opinion. The book I got is The Book of the Hopi, The First Revelation of the Hopi's Historical and Religious Worldview by Frank Waters. And I picked this up because, again, I like picking up books on Native Americans to help educate myself. This focuses primarily on the spiritual beliefs and more of the religion of the Hopi, and I'm taking an anthropology of religion class, and I'm really interested in learning more about different religions. And one of the examples we talk about in class, the Hopi and this does not have a 
audiobook and one thing I don't know if you can really tell but one thing I've started to do for all my books that don't have audiobooks is put a sticker on the back to help me remember so I don't have to look it up every time so all the books that don't have audiobooks like this one have a little sticker on the end anyway super excited to read this and to learn more and I have so many books that I'm excited to read. It's just going to take so long. The next book I picked up is going along with the Native American theme. <laughs> is the Maya, The Riddle and Rediscovery of a Lost Civilization. This is the third revised edition by Charles Gatlin Camp. I don't really know much about this other than it is about the Maya. And I don't really have a lot of books about the Maya. And I figured that I would up my game as far as collecting books about the Maya. In terms of prehistoric empires that existed in the Americas, I really know a lot about the Aztecs and not a lot about the Maya. And I would like to learn more about the Maya. And I don't really know a lot about the Inca and other stuff like that. I know a little bit more about the Hokkians. I need to focus on the books that I actually bought and not pulling other books off my shelves. This book also does not have an audiobook. The next book I picked up is Lost Bird of Wounded Knee, The Spirit of the Lakota by Rene Sansom Flood. This book tells the story of Lost Bird, who was one of the two survivors, I believe. I don't remember her story exactly. The Wounded Knee Massacre is a horrific time in American history, and there's some still fucked up things, like the people who carried it out, who actually murdered the people there, still have, still have. What is it, like purple hearts or something? They still have those purple hearts. And yes, they're dead now, but that's that's seriously fucked up. I don't think that they should be awarded anything, any congratulatory anything for murdering a bunch of people. Back to this book. This one does not have an audiobook. I wouldn't say that the two survivors of the Wounded Knee Massacre were all very young. She was a baby. And I think the other survivor was also a baby or a very, very young toddler. Ugh. Man, what happened to Bigfoot's people is just very, very sad. The next book I got is Sex in History by Ray Tannehill. As you can tell, um, this is going to be about sex. Believe it or not, not every society believed in abstinence or anything like that. I'm very curious about this. I saw it again, again. The deals are so good. This book was only $3. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm very excited to learn a little bit more about the history of sex or just how it played a role in different cultures. And sadly, this does not have an audiobook. So sad. This next book, I'm actually super excited to show you. <laughs> and that is the collector's editions of Victorian lesbian erotica. Apparently, there was a ton of this written in Victorian times, which, whoa. I saw this and I was like, oh my god, I have to get this. Because it says on the back that Basically, lesbians were treated as bisexual women who were just, you know, experimenting. And I'm like, oh my god, this is so scandalous. Like, I have to get this. When you look at the index, it doesn't say who wrote what. This is an anthology. So you get just sort of snippets of different things. I'm very intrigued. There's no audiobook for this. Don't judge me. This next book is also quite a chunker. Look at that. Look at that. I thought it would break a thousand pages and it does not. Anyway, and that is The Last Empress, Madame Chiang Kai-shek and The Birth of Modern China by Hannah Kaupla. I've been picking up a lot of books about China recently because I spent time there and I just want to know more. I want to know more because I feel like I don't know enough about Chinese history. I, I literally, I saw this, this book in the used bookstore that's like right around the corner from my apartment and I thought about getting it and I'm so glad I waited because that one was like I think $8 or something or $5 and this one was $4. I also don't think I mentioned that this doesn't have an audiobook. 600 pages, no audiobook, let's go! Next book I got is Mao's Last Dancer by Li Chunqing. Chin. Apparently it's a motion picture, I did not know that. This is about this dancer who's taken from rural China to go and study ballet. I picked this up because it was about dance and my family, we love dance. Dance plus China stuff. I'm just like, yes, let's get this book. This guy has an audiobook, so woohoo. The next book I picked up is this little book called The Nature of the Chinese Character. 
Gifts from the Earth by Barbara Aria, and it literally just goes, this is fire, it just goes through, but some of the bigger, more popular characters and kind of explains why, and even has like how to draw them correctly. I never draw my Chinese characters correctly. My Chinese friends make fun of me so much for it. They're just like, you started wrong. And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know how to actually, I'm not Chinese, but I am attempting, keyword is attempting, to learn Chinese. I think I'm focusing more on reading Chinese than speaking Chinese because reading Chinese is actually really simple for me, but I try. I try. <laughs> ha! Ah, this is just a cute little book that I saw and I was like, well, maybe this will help and it'll be kind of like a little fun exploration into different Chinese characters. This does not have an audio book. I didn't really search for one. This was originally $14. Do you know how much I got it for? $2. It's crazy. The next book I picked up is Chinese Culture and Society by Yao Baorong and Wei Zhou. This is unsurprisingly about Chinese culture and society and when I looked at the map I looked specifically to see if Chongqing was still a part of Sichuan which it's not which is good because if you didn't know Chongqing was actually a part of Sichuan province for a while but then it broke up about 20-30 years ago because of economic reasons it was more lucrative for Chongqing to be separated from Sichuan so that's what they did. Then I looked to see when it was published and it was published in like around 2007. That means that yes, it's up to date. So that'll be really cool and interesting to contrast my experiences in China with what this book says. And also, this book just so happens to be from China. Do you know how I know? Well, very easy. If you look on the back, that says price and it says 40 yuan, which translates to be a little over seven, eight dollars. I can't do math. Basically, one American dollar is about 6.9 yuan right now. I'm really excited and interested to read this. This also does not have an audiobook. The next book I picked up is The Neanderthal Enigma Solving the Mystery of Modern Human Origins by James Shreve. And I also picked up another book about Neanderthals. So now I have two books about Neanderthals. And I'm not unhappy about that. I'm very happy about that. I was interested in this one for the same reason I was interested in the other one. You can never have enough books about Neanderthals in my opinion. I'm just gonna keep talking. You guys can deal with the sirens. <laughs> but I don't know anything really about the discovery of Neanderthals and the whole battle of it to be seen as one of our ancestral cousins. But apparently it's very interesting because there's multiple books about it. This should be interesting and this also does not have an audio. And I want a book about Neanderthals to have an audio book. Is that too much to ask? Apparently it is. The next an anthropology like book I picked up was Through a Window My 30 Years with Chimpanzees of Gombe by Jane Goodall. And Jane Goodall isn't herself an anthropologist. I picked this book up because I think Jane Goodall is really cool. Also in my biological anthropology class we did touch on her work that she did in studying chimpanzees in order to understand our own human evolution. I figured that I would pick it up because I think her work with chimpanzees is just incredible and I would like to know more detailed information about it. And this one actually does, oh my god, I have so many Facebook notifications. They just keep popping up and it's so annoying. I completely forgot what I was talking about. She also wrote In the Shadow of Man. Well, I guess I'll try to have to find that one too. She was quite revolutionary, in my opinion, in the way she studied Abe. This does have an audiobook. This next book I picked up is Anthropology and Modern Life by Franz Boas and pretty sure Franz Boas is like a famous anthropologist. It's talking more about race, culture, and how older societies and cultures compare to our new ones, and I just thought this would be a really interesting jaunt. I just want more anthropology-specific books about anthropology written by anthropologists for anthropologists. Fortunately, this does not have an audiobook. Why is that such a thing? I hate that so few anthropology books actually have audiobooks. The next book I picked up is this one. It doesn't have a dust jacket, but it is On Morality and Society by Emile Durkenheim. Emile is a famous anthropologist who focused mostly on religious studies. We do talk about him in my Anthropology of Religion class. He believes some like weird things about religion, in my opinion. He basically believes that religion keeps people from going batshit crazy, which okay, but you have to remember that Durkheim 
grew up in the French Revolution time, so when people were just chopping each other's heads off. We'll see, but I decided to pick this up because I saw it and I was really interested by it. It doesn't have an audiobook. It's kind of sad. A lot of these books have these kind of markings where they're discard. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that hurts. Now on to books that I think you guys are a little bit more interested in. I picked up Salem's Lot by Stephen King. This is my first Stephen King novel that I've ever bought. It's not the first one I've read. I'm currently reading The Shining. I tried to find The Shining there. They didn't have it. So I picked up Salem's Lot, which I recently read Dracula, which is over there on my I have read this pile of books and I don't really want to get it out and people have been recommending this to me to read as a good starter Stephen King especially because I've read Dracula and I liked that it does have an audiobook go you and best part about it it was three dollars are you kidding me three dollars tres tres dollars okay oh my god anyway Moving on. And the next book I got was Ptolemy's Gate by Jonathan Stroud. This is the third book in the Bartimaeus trilogy. I love this book series. It's one of the few book series that I constantly return to. Yeah, this is the one book we don't own. I think we have an ARC copy of Amulet of Samarkand because we have Golem's Eye. I need to complete this trilogy. The only one that I don't have, which is kind of a companion novel to the Bartimaeus trilogy, is Solomon's Ring, but that one is kind of hard to find. I haven't really seen it anywhere. And it's a hardcover too, and I really like hardcovers. I love footnotes. This, this book series made me fall in love with footnotes and how Jonathan Strauss uses footnotes in this. 10 of 10. This does have an audiobook. It's Bartimaeus up on the front. We love Bartimaeus. And Daniel's an asshole. It's Bartimaeus is where it's at. These next two books I'm going to talk about together because it'd be redundant if I split them up. And that is Brissinger, Brissinger by Christopher Paolini and Inheritance by Christopher Paolini. These are the last two books in the Inheritance Cycle. I really like this series and I have the first two books. I just didn't have the last two books. So when I saw these, I was like, oh my God, I must get them. I reread it a lot. Can we just talk about how the audiobook narrator does a banging job, but the voice he uses for Sephira is like this low, rough, gravelly one. And when I watched the movie, the shit show that it is, I was so taken back by Sephira having a feminine voice so I was like, that's not right. That's weird. Now all I need to do is find the Spanish translations of these. I have one. I need to find the Spanish translations of these. Like, what the heck? How do I not have those already? Probably because I haven't been looking for them that hard. These obviously have audiobooks because I just talked about it. Okay, so that concludes all the stuff I got on day one. Now let's move on to the stuff I got on day two. And I don't really have this as organized as well as I did the other ones. I just have the stuff from day two organized into audiobooks versus no audiobooks. Then I have a separate pile for stuff that wasn't books that I got. With these next two books I'm going to do the same thing I did with The Inheritance Cycle. I'm going to show them together because again I think trying to talk about both of them would just kind of be redundant. And that is I got The Bad Beginning and The the Wide Window by Lemony Snicket. I got these two because if you didn't see in my rearrange my bookshelves with me, you saw that I had like a bunch of them. I had all but like the first four and the 11th one. Let's see if I can complete the collection more. And I was able to pick up the first book and the third book. So now we're missing less of the collection. I don't know why we're, we don't have the 11th. That's so strange to me. The series Unfortunate Events was a series that I actually never finished. I got to like book seven or something and kind of gave up. I should have been reading those with audiobooks and I wasn't. So this is a book series that I would want to like read to my children. So these do have audiobooks. I think there's like a couple of different audiobooks. There's like a full cast recording or something. I kind of want to complete the set so that when I read these hopefully one day with my children we can read all of them together. Group reading is so important to me especially with younger children. I got Black Elk Speaks beginning the life story of a holy man of the Ongala Sioux as told through John G. Nairhart or Flaming Rainbow. And this is by John G. Nairhart, Flaming Rainbow. This one is just like a Native American one that I pulled up. I thought it was interesting because this book was published in 1932. And out of all the books I got, I did not expect this one to have an audiobook. Just because typically what happens is my anthropology book or my Native American stuff that I get doesn't really have audiobooks, but this one does, and that's awesome. It makes this so much more accessible to me, which makes me ten times more excited to read it. And I don't know much else about it yet, and it's kind of higher up on my 
TBR because it has an audiobook. The next book I got was Winter by Marissa Meyer and this is Winter is part of the Lunar Chronicles series and I read this series a little less than a year ago when I was in China because I ran out of stuff to read. <laughs> Basically, I didn't bring anything, so I was solely relying on my library, and they had all of this. I really liked The Lunar Chronicles. I thought it was really cool. I'm a sucker for a fairy tale retelling, or really any sort of retellings. This was the only one they had there, so I figured I'd pick it up. I guess now I'm on a quest to get the rest of the series. <laughs> this is an audiobook. This next book I got is Becoming China's Bitch and the Nine Catastrophes We Must Avoid Right Now. I picked this up because I thought the title was hilarious. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about reading this. It just says a manifesto for the Radical Center. I don't really know what that means. I think it'll be really interesting to see whether or not I agree with them or not or how much my take is on it because I don't really know what the catastrophes are. I, this does have an audiobook. I don't know really what to expect. Next book I got is If the Walls Could Talk, An Intimate History of the Home by Lucy Worsley and I really these sort of histories of like relatively like mundane things where it's not like a big historical event that we're reading about. So I was looking through this earlier and I found that there's a chapter called Deviant Sex and Masturbation and then I flipped open to this page and it has this which is apparently an anti-masturbatory device that is just so entertaining. It's okay. Masturbation is a healthy thing. Feel free to do it. I'm very excited about this book now. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be very interesting and entertaining, and it also has an audiobook. The next book I picked up is Ever by Gail Carson Levine. I really like this book. I read this when I was really little. Gail Carson Levine, you'll probably best know her for Ella Enchanted. I was really into her books, like, in late elementary school and early middle school. I literally did a book report on this in sixth grade. If I'm back home and you guys want to see that, I could probably dig it out for you and I could show you my terrible drawings. <laughs> Basically, you have Olus, this dude. He falls in love with Kezi and he's a god and she's mortal. That's a whole thing. I read this at a time in my life when I was really into polytheism. It gave me Greek gods type feel. I want to reread this soon. wonder if it's as good as I remember. Obviously it has an audiobook and I was just reading the back cover before I was picked this up and I was like wow I really remember that scene so vividly. The next book got is Fly Girl. How Five Daring Women Defied All Odds and Made Aviation History by Keith O'Brien. I saw this book actually way back when I was in DC and went to the Air and Space Museum. Let's pick up another important part of women's history. That's kind of why I picked it up. Yeah, there's not really much else to say about this. I don't know who these women are. I don't know what they're going to talk about. But this does have an audiobook, so it makes it so much nicer and also it's hardcover. I got so many hardcover books. I'm so happy. Next I picked up Founding Mothers, The Women Who Raised Our Nation by Cookie Roberts. Essentially just like store. There's a business card in here. National First Lady's Library. I think that being a woman at that time was very interesting and I think it's really interesting how the women use their power and their influence through their husbands or their s brothers or their fathers in order to influence politics. My personal favorite is Abigail Adams because I think she's amazing. That's that. This does have an audiobook. Next book I got is The Borgias, The Hidden History by G.J. Meyer. They are whack. <laughs> there's lots of rumors circulating at the time they lived and there's still lots of those rumors that are being perpetuated today. I'm kind of interested to see like what's fact from fiction but if you want to know how freaking crazy this family is just know that there's two TV shows about them. Yes, not one, but two. They were made like relatively recently. Yeah, if that doesn't tell you how Borgias can be kind of crazy, I don't know what will. I'm kind of excited to read this and this does have an audiobook. The next book I got is Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed 
by Jared Diamond. And I picked this up because I read Guns, Germs, and Steel also by Jared Diamond and I really liked that one. So I think this one will also be interesting to read. Also, oh my god, I forgot about this. Apparently someone wrote all these notes and they just left them in the book. Literally like prologue. This will be really interesting to look at. I figured if I liked Guns, Germs, and Steel, I would like this one. They did have a hardback version of Guns, Germs, and Steel, and I thought really hard about buying it, but I was like, can I justify having two copies of Guns, Germs, and Steel? No. This one has an audiobook, and this will be interesting to get into. The next book I got is Life in Motion, An Unlikely Ballerina, My Story of Adversity and Grace by Misty Copeland. If you don't know who Misty Copeland is, she is the first African-American prima ballerina. I picked this up because I had the fortune of actually going and seeing her perform in Swan Lake when I was in New York couple years ago. That was really cool. That was a really amazing experience. It's my brother's birthday coming up and if you don't know my brother is a dancer. He really likes Misty Copeland. Yeah I think I'm gonna give this to my brother as a birthday present but I still wanted to let you guys know that I got this. Uh, it does have an audio book. Why is it so cold? Next I got Grant by Ron Chernow. This is a big book. It's not quite a thousand pages. It's close though. It's like in the 900s. I got this book because I read Ron Chernow's biography of Hamilton and I really liked that one. I think Ron Chernow is an excellent biographer. I really only know about Grant in context of him being the general of the Union in the Civil War and that's all I really cared to know about him. I think it'll be interesting to learn more about him. And it has an audiobook. I'm excited to dig into more of the like biography. John Adams by David McCall. This book apparently was the inspiration for the HBO series, which I did watch. So this will be a very interesting read because it is John Adams. Um, I know a little bit about his kids and all of that stuff. I think his daughter is this really, really strong woman. I've picked up a lot of Federalists in this haul, and this also has an audiobook. This next book I got is The Last Castle, The Epic Story of Love, Loss, and American Royalty in the Nation's Largest Home by Denise Hernan. I always keep confusing for Devil in the White City. I know their cover designs are slightly different, but they're also very similar. I'm not saying anything or trying to imply anything. I'm just saying every time I see Last Castle, I always think it's Devil in the White City. Literally, that's why I picked this book up, because I was tired of being confused and almost picking this one up thinking it was this one. <laughs> I don't know if that's a stupid reason or not. It does sound interesting and it does have an audiobook, so maybe I'll get to it. This is the next one I got, A Beautiful Mind, The Life of Mathematical Genius and Nobel Laureate John Nash by Sylvia Nassar. I think it's interesting, I think talking about mental health and reading books about mental health because he, I think, went crazy. It just says he slipped into madness. I don't know. I don't know what slipped into madness means. So we're going to see. I think it's going to be a sad story. It's an audiobook. The next book I got is The Girls of Atomic City, The Untold Story of the Woman Who Helped Win World War II by Denise Karen. And I did not realize that this book and The Last Castle was written by the same person. I'm interested to learn more about what happened in the Atomic City. I hope this one has lots of science too and I think it'll be really interesting to learn about how the how the women contributed. The next book I got is Morgue, A Life in Death by Dr. Vincent DiMaio and Ron Franchel. I think it's going to focus a lot on forensic science but I think it will be a healthy way for me to dive into topics of death. I kind of picked this up because I'm trying to confront my feelings about death. I do really like forensic stuff, so I'm hoping this leans more that way. And this does have an audiobook, which is great. The next book I got is The Zookeeper's Wife by Diane Eckerman. This is about Holocaust, how this one zookeeper and his wife decided to smuggle people out. There is a movie about this. I did watch the movie. It was one of those brief times in my life where I actually had cable, and so I saw part of the movie. I kind of like these stories where you hear about the different ways people got people out. This does have an audiobook. I'm really interested to read it, but I don't think I will, at least not anytime soon. So don't ask me to do that. I'm asking you out of respect 
for my mental health. I want to be able to, but I know I just can't do it. Okay, we kind of saw this coming. I got Rob Turnell's biography of Alexander Hamilton, and my family does have a copy of this, and they could probably give it to me if they wanted to, but I'm trying to build my own library separate from theirs. I wanted my own copy of this. I really like this biography. I did read it. I want to reread it, but I'm not really sure when I'm going to reread it. But I don't know. But I'm happy to have this book about the bisexual icon that is Alexander Hamilton. This has an audiobook, and actually my library back home does have the audiobook. <laughs> it does have this very sad, like, discard stamp on it. I have a test tomorrow. It's fun. I have my note cards, literally. Right down there. Anyway, next I picked up Maria Antoinette, The Journey by Antonia Fraser. This has been made into a movie. I did watch the film one time because I got really bored one day. This does have an audiobook. I find Maria Antoinette fascinating. Honestly, kind of feel a little bit bad for her, but also not because she was like a queen. Oh, very, very complex situation and she was not equipped to handle it. I'm kind of excited to read it and it's so pink. Oh my god, the color is so stark. I also feel like the color is very fitting. The next book I picked up is super shiny, and that is The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. I've been meaning to pick up The God Delusion for a little bit of time now, and I'm glad that I finally got it. This does have an audiobook, and oh my god, this is so shiny. It is so distracting. <laughs> I'm excited to read this. I think it will help me better formulate my thoughts about my views on religion. The next book I got is Well All Rivers Run to the Sea by Eli Weisel. And I do have his Night, and I will not be reading this book anytime soon. It kind of goes along the same reasons of why I will not read The Zookeeper's Wife. I'm not wanting to put myself through that until I am more emotionally stable and ready to handle Holocaust subject matter. I don't really know what else this has to talk about. Obviously what people have said in reaction to this book is that he was a very good man and he took this really ugly thing and terrible thing that happened to him and tried to bring awareness to it, be more of a, a humanitarian. And I think it's fair for me to prioritize my own mental health over reading a book about the Holocaust. I'm sorry, but also not really because you have to take care of number one first. Okay, now we're getting into the books that do not have audiobooks. We're rounding the bend, kind of, but also not really. The first book I got was The Chinese, an insider's look at the issues which affect and shape China Jasper Becker. And at first I was a little bit skeptical of this book, and then I quickly glanced at the back and it turns out, oh my god, he lived in China for like 20 years. I think this will be a really interesting look at Chinese culture, kind of going along with Chinese society and culture that I got. I think this one will be nice because it will be specifically from a foreigner's perspective. I'd like to see how that contrasts with my personal opinions, and I would like to know more about this person's specific experience in China. Mine was very meaningful, and that's really all I will say about it. No audiobook. I got the slow hand women writing erotica it's like an anthology of a bunch of different writers and so it was edited by Michelle Slung. I am very excited to read this because it's women writing erotica specifically for other women I want to feel things in many places. I don't really have much else to say other than this does not have an audiobook. The next book I got is Red Nile the uh blah, blah, blah. A Biography of the World's Greatest River by Robert Twitter. I don't really know what I'm expecting from this book other than a discussion of the Nile. I'm kind of hoping it goes like into its history and how it influenced Egypt and how it was so important for Egypt. I really like the cover. I do know that the pharaoh had to ejaculate into the Nile about once every planting season because that uh, was a whole fertilization thing. Egypt is an interesting interesting place. This does not have an audiobook, unfortunately. The next book I got is Going Down Jericho Road, The Memphis Strike, MLK's Last Campaign, Michael K. Honey. This does not have an audiobook. I think MLK is awesome. If you don't know who MLK is, it's Martin Luther King Jr. He did lots of really great things for America. This looked like a good place to start my collection. I'm glad I did. Because yeah, these are very, very important conversations 
and necessary conversations because we cannot forget our history because if we forget our history we are doomed to repeat it and I don't know about you but I don't want to do that. I want to progress as a society. The next two books I got I'm going to talk about in tandem because again I don't want to be overly redundant and that is Mouse 1 and Mouse 2 by Art Spiegelman. We have a copy of this at my home, but those are my dad's copy. He's very protective of them. I wanted my own copy. I read this graphic novel when I was fifth grade. These books are intense. Probably not gonna reread them anytime soon, but they are a book that I want in my library. I don't really have an audiobook, but that's also because they're a graphic novel. For a while, I really liked digesting and learning history through graphic novels. If you guys have any suggestions of really good graphic novels that are specifically about history, let me know, leave them in the comments below. Below. The next book I got is about the Iroquois by Barbara Graymont. It's just a book about the Iroquois. I find the Iroquois really interesting and that's why I got this book and there really isn't much else to say other than this doesn't have an audiobook. I'm hoping that this uh, reads kind of like an ethnography. I believe I've seen this particular wampum belt before. I don't know why I've seen that. Maybe it's because it's in a museum I've been to but I've literally felt like I've seen this exact one. Oh they have a whole series of books. If I like this one maybe I'll try and collect the series. Maybe this would be a good thing for me to teach my kids about Native American. The next book I picked up is Math and the Mona Lisa, The Art and Science of Leonardo da Vinci by Brumlet Atelier. It's going to be really interesting to see how Leonardo da Vinci used math in his paintings. I want to know more about the how. This does not have an audiobook. The next book I picked up is The Quotable Atheist, Ammunition for Non-Believers, Political Junkies, Gad Files, and Those Generally Hellbound by Jack Huberman. Oh, he wrote a book called Bullshit. That's hilarious. If I like this, I might have to pick up Bullshit. I think it's interesting because it says that on the back here that it's supposed to challenge believers and non-believers. I think that's great. It lists some of the famous atheists that it pulls from, um, like Noam Chomsky. Oh my god, we literally learned about him in my linguistics class. Galileo, Carl Sagan. This doesn't have an audiobook. The next book I got is The Search for Eve. Have Scientists Found the Mother of Us All by Michael H. Brown. This is a sciencey book all about, I think, our mitochondrial DNA and how we were able to trace it back to this proverbial Eve. And I am so, so into this sort of thing. And I believe this has been recommended to me by some of my professors to read. I'd have to go back and cross-reference the margins of my notes. Very happy to have this book. It does not have an audiobook. The next book I got is The Hot Sauce Cookbook. I got this because I really like spicy food. I want to know how to cook more spicy food. Food I cook right now, what I do is I get Sichuan sauce or Sriracha sauce and I just kind of dump it on my food to make it spicy because otherwise it's just not spicy. And that's sad in my opinion. I really love spicy food. I think this will be nice. I think this has some recipes on how to make your own salsa slash spicy sauces. So so I think that will be really interesting and I didn't even really bother looking to see if this had an audiobook because I always kind of assume when it comes to cookbooks and there aren't really audiobooks. I'm excited to actually try some of these. Finally, the last book, not the last thing, the last book I got is The Navajo Code Talkers by Doris A. Paul. If you don't know what the, who the Code Talkers were, they were Native Americans that were specifically hired by the American government to talk in code to relay information from one group of soldiers to the next and they chose Navajos because their language is already really so complex that it would be really really hard to decode it. I didn't have a book about any of the code talkers. I know there's more popular books about code talkers but this is just the one I saw and I wanted to have one in my library. This doesn't have an audiobook. I believe one of my professors, grandparents or someone, was a code talker. Not sure. I'd have to double check that. I did get some things that were not strictly books. I got two audiobooks, free video only TV show thing. Let's get into it. The first audiobook I got is the audiobook for Duel with the Devil, which is the audiobook for this book. So now I have both and the actual CD, so I don't have to worry about my library having this. I can just listen to it, which is a big relief because if you don't know, I really like Hamilton. He's my favorite founding father. Very happy to have this audiobook. 
The next audiobook that I got is Have a Little Faith by Mitch Album. This is a book that I don't actually have here, but I have back at my home. And I saw this and I was like, well, let's just get the audiobook because we know we have it. We love having audiobooks to things. Not sure how I feel about this book. I have not attempted to read it yet. I just got the audiobook because it was, well, one dollar. The next thing I got was The Prince of Egypt. This is one of my favorite movies. I really like this movie. It's it's a great musical. It's got so many good songs, so many good bops that I will literally put on and like, I will literally just watch the entire movie just to listen to the song. I don't know, one of my mom's favorite actors is in this and she loves watching this with me just because <laughs> the actor voice is Ramesses. I don't care if it's on Netflix. Shit can come off of Netflix so easily. I'm just glad that I have an actual copy of this so I can pop it in my currently non-existent DVD player. <laughs> the very last thing I got is Heroes Season 1 and Season 2. I really like Heroes. Kind of sad it's not on Netflix anymore because of course I took it off because always take off good shows. I do think it progressively got worse as it went on. My brothers and I, we both really like heroes. Our favorite character is actually Hiro Nakamura. He's basically the reason I knew a little bit of Japanese before I went to Japan. Hiro Nakamura and him going, Yippa! is literally the only reason that you need to watch heroes. I'm a happy camper. The evil person is Siler. The same actor plays Spock in like the um, Calvin universe. And every time I see that, I'm just like, no, it's Siler Spock. He's going to murder everyone. I can't handle this. All right, weirdos, thank you so much for watching this video with me. Essentially, I got 63 things in this book haul, and I spent a little over $2 on each thing. And I would say that's a pretty good deal, especially because some of these books are almost $30 a piece alone. And yeah, I'm so happy that I found this local books books local library book sale and yeah um do the things that you're supposed to do like liking sharing subscribing leave me a comment tell me which one you want me to see read next if there's anything that you want to say to me or anything let me know put it down in the comments and i will see you guys next week <laughs> why are all of these books directly behind me that was sorry I'm distracted I saw thought I saw a not nice symbol in here <laughs> don't judge me <laughs>